But good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. <clears throat> Excuse me. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. Um, we do record the show as we are doing right now and is then posted to our website for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. Uh, so please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the uh, topics we have in the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, uh, similar to your state library. So we provide services and resources and training um, to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, um, historical societies, corrections, museums, et cetera, et cetera. Really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries. Uh, something cool libraries are doing. Uh, we bring on guest speakers, um, something interesting we think they could be doing. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Real mishmash. <laughs> uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on the show to talk about things that we're doing here through the Library Commission, but we also bring in guest speakers. And that is what we have um, that's what we're doing today. Uh, with us this morning is Jenny White. Good morning, Jenny. And she is from our uh, Schuyler, Nebraska Public Library. And she is going to talk to us about how um, in their library they built uh, relationships uh, with their... Um... Sorry? I... Um, <laughs> like your mic I couldn't isn't... hear you for a moment, but I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks like you're cutting in and out a little bit there, but it looks like it's all good now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and she's going to talk about how they, okay. at their library, built <laughs> community relationships with their uh, Spanish-speaking population. So I will hand it over to you, Jenny, to take us away and tell us about what you did in Skylar. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here and uh, listening to uh, what happened to us here in Skylar. Um, my first slide here is um, my um, ARSL Leadership Institute slide. Um, yeah. that, that stands for the Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Mm -hmm. um, I was part of a leadership program with ARSL. I saw and, that. Congratulations. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I'll take a step back. <laughs> um, I'm Jenny White. I am the library director at the Schuyler Public Library. And as part of my participation in that program, we had to come up with a project that would benefit our library community. And originally, my project was going to be bilingual story time in our library. <laughs> and um, okay, I'll readily admit that having a story time in a library was pretty low hanging fruit. Oh, you're gonna have story time in a library. How revolutionary. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, after talking with my um, program leaders, I realized that what I was really uh, reaching for was to see programming in Spanish in the library. And to do that, I needed to, I needed the library to build relationships with the Spanish speaking population in Schuyler. Um, I, I had previous programming in the library um, and it was frustrating. I mean, we've all had those wonderful program ideas and you get all your resources together and you put it out there on a silver plate and mm -hmm. nobody shows up. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what was I gonna do? How was I going to, um, how was I going to not have that happen? Um, 
Well, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about Skylar. Um, there we go. I, for some reason, don't remember how to advance my slides. Um, you should be able just to just click on it and then you maybe use your arrow key. Okay, Here, you right click key. on that to get rid of that. Okay. Um, just right click anywhere on the screen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's okay. um, Thank you. Go, go ahead and click, click that slideshow button at the top again to get them full screen. And then you should be able to just use the arrow keys on your keyboard or click on the slide and then it go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pista. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Skyler is a town of around 6,500 people in eastern Nebraska. Uh, we're an hour away from both Lincoln and Omaha. The major employer in town is a meat packing plant that since the 70s has employed many Spanish speakers. So um, I went to the Census Bureau and I got some um, information about Skylar. And uh, this is uh, our employment pie chart. And you can see that manufacturing is the biggie. Mm -hmm. um, also um, agriculture, because we are um, rural. Um, I was actually very surprised that our clinic in town, healthcare, <laughs> was a major employer, even more than our uh, school system was. Okay, but anyway, so uh, the meatpacking plant in Schuyler um, hired a lot of Spanish speakers, and now Schuyler has grown into a town that has 75% of its population speaking Spanish in their wow. homes. Yeah, um, we, we certainly have uh, other languages. Um, talking to teachers in town, they said that there's over 12 different languages that are spoken in their students' households, but uh, Spanish and English and our growing Somali population are the three biggies here in Schuyler. Um, the Omaha World Herald, the largest newspaper in Nebraska had done articles on Skylar. They called it a seismic demographic shift. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's huge then. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, so how do I reach out and provide services to a population that really hasn't made use of their library? A community group that speaks a different language than me. Um, before uh, we moved to Skyler, I had lived in Hong Kong for nine years, so I, I had experience of living in a country, a foreign country, where I didn't speak the language, so I have empathy for the the residents of Skyler that are, you know, who have just arrived or um, aren't fluent in English. Sure. I, I've had, I, I've been terrified trying to fill out my insurance form because the English translation was just um, not very clear. Mm -hmm. I've gotten, I don't want to say hijacked, but um, the taxi driver didn't understand how, how to pronounce my village name in Chinese. So he took me clear across town to <laughs> someplace I didn't even know. You know, I've, I've had experiences where um, the language barrier really inhibited communication and um, just, you know, <laughs> left a mark. <laughs> so, Moving from Hong Kong to Schuyler, seeing that we had a large population of uh, residents that weren't fluent in English, how do I get them into the library? I, you know, we had we had some Spanish books in the library. Um, <clears throat> we didn't have any Spanish speaking staff. Um, we didn't have any programming in Spanish, so. <laughs> Where do I start? What do I do? Um, so 
um, <clears throat> at last year's um, ARSL conference, um, I had the pleasure of hearing Jamie LaRue speak about the yes. community assessment process. I'm sorry, Krista, I just keep talk, talk, talking. No, you're good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, should, I should tell everybody, if you have questions, please let me know. Feel mm -hmm. free to interrupt me at any time. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So um, you might be more familiar with the community assessment process than I was. This was a new thing for me. And uh, he was talking about the, the steps you you have your assessment, you do your planning, then you implement your plan, and then you achieve your results, and then you evaluate, and then you reassess, and you go back to planning. It's this, this cycle of um, assessing your, your community, your residents. Um, he, he outlined, he gave a specific, specific <laughs> steps that we could take to identify community members and specific questions that we could ask them so I could start seeing patterns in the needs of my community. And um, if you take a look at these questions, none of them have to do with anything about the library. It's all about mm -hmm them how did you get here you know what is your story what do you want to do going into the future i mean the it, it was it was all about them okay and you know i was like oh hey yeah um you know how do i get the people that aren't normal library users to see value in the library i have to find out what's valuable to them and I was very excited because this was a great place for me to start. There were steps. I finally felt like this is something I can do. <laughs> you know, the whole point was to, for me to learn skills that would help me become uh, more effective in my community. So uh, this tickled me to no one because I had steps. I knew what to do. Um, so, so I started having conversations with uh, community members that I was already, um, I had already interacted with, um, you know, you know, the easy ones. Um, <laughs> I, I started with the director of the Heartland Worker Center. Uh, he's in charge. Uh, he works very closely with the packing plant employees. And the former library board president <laughs> is now the coordinator of an early childhood education program here in Schuyler. And they pointed me to other folks in Schuyler who were organizers or representatives of their groups. Um, yeah, the, the first ones were easy, but um, you know, they would refer me to somebody else and picking up the phone and calling a stranger and asking for their time was a little intimidating for me. Understandable, absolutely. Yeah, if you're not used to that, <laughs> then it's not your regular. <laughs> yeah, and, um, I was very lucky because everybody was very um, generous with their time. Uh, everybody, everybody was willing to give me a little bit of their time. Um, I didn't have anybody say no yet. <laughs> so uh, I started having conversations and I did start to see some patterns right away. Um, I kept hearing the words community and family and valued and respect. And I learned that um, Skyler is very proud of its multiculturalism, but they do recognize that there's not a lot of uh, mingling between the, the different, the different um, social groups, the different languages. Mm. And, um, and people were seeking out ways to bridge that. So I want to show that the library is a place for everyone. So um, I started out 
uh, with little things. Uh, I make an effort <laughs> to make our signage and our um, social media posts in uh, bilingual uh, to the best of my ability. Um, <laughs> I was lucky enough to receive a, a continuing education grant from the Nebraska Library Commission so that I could take some Spanish courses online. Yep. And so um, I try to do everything, an English version and a Spanish version. I have, um, I have members of my library board that are bilingual. So um, they're, they're very generous with their time uh, proofreading <laughs> all of my signage for me. So I can feel pretty confident when I, when I put something out there that it will be um, understood. Hopefully, um, I, we just updated our policy book, and I I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go pro with that. I really am gonna have to get a native speaker to work through the the entire policy book to translate it into Spanish, so mm -hmm. I can post it on our website. Um, Amanda Sweet at the uh, Library Commission helped us um, put a, trans a translation feature on our library website. Nice. So, um, so um, yeah, so th th they can choose um, Somali or Spanish or English and it will translate our website for us. Mm -hmm. um, I used grant. I used our ARPA grant money <laughs> to augment our Spanish and bilingual collections across all age groups: um, adult books, kids books, YA books. Um, I would ask people that came into the library, you know, what their favorite authors were. Um, I did not know Pablo Neruda was Chilean. I thought he was Spanish. It was a mistake. <laughs> He's Chilean. So now that I know um, some important authors from different Spanish speaking countries, I can order those in. Um, I was lucky enough to get a work study student last summer. Um, and uh, I noticed people would come in and ask for her. Um, she she graduated and went on to college, but I have another work study student that's going to intern with us this summer, also bilingual. So um, budgetary wise, um, I'm not able to hire any new library staff right now. Um, so um, so the fact that I that I have an intern that is bilingual um, is going to be really helpful. I'm sorry, let me flip through some more slides here. I think I'm behind. Okay, so I'm sorry. So, so the, your, your bilingual people, is that Spanish or Somali? That is Spanish. Ah, okay. Yep. So I just have, I have some pictures here of um, some events that we had in the library that I was just really proud of the attendance because um, the, the connections that I had made uh, in the community had really helped get the word out. Um, you know, they, they, they knew where to post my Spanish language flyer. They knew who to email to really get our um, attendance. Um, the sentence I was trying to say was to really get our uh, attendance at our programming bumped up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I should say that uh, none of this programming was done in Spanish yet, mm. but we did have higher attendance for programming in our library, which is a start. Mm. Okay. Um, through, yeah, through my connections, through my conversations, um, I knew who to contact to get the word out uh, for our upcoming library events. So someone just asked about that right as you were saying it. That's so weird. Because someone said, <laughs> I asked, the pro so the programs are in English, even though the ad is in Spanish. And that is exactly what you just said. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
I, I hope that by showing that I'm making an effort to engage Spanish speakers in the library and providing services and materials in Spanish, it will encourage more participation and uh, increased circulation of our Spanish language collection. Um, let me just go through here. Um, I, and um, I know that this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing. Um, my, my, my program with ARSL is finished, but I know that um, I'm still always going to have to reach out. I'm still always going to have to ask questions. Um, um, learning what's important and necessary, not just with our Spanish speaking population, but also our growing Somali population and other diverse groups in Schuyler. Um, there's always that one person that you find that knows everybody. <laughs> so I, I haven't found that person in our Somali speaking population yet, but I will. <laughs> so um, surprisingly, I started seeing progress right away. Um, there were little things like, I found myself being braver speaking Spanish to patrons in the library. Um, the, in that practice with some with people is yeah, that's huge. You, you just do it more and more, and and especially mm -hmm. when they can respond back to you and and possibly help and correct or oh, yeah. <laughs> how yeah, you're to, actually that go that's pronounced a little more this way, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they they were very patient with me. Um, being able to ask a patron uh, to practice, hello, I am studying Spanish, will you practice Spanish with me? Um, and having them understand me and me being able to understand that they need um, 30 copias doble piginas in color, or I could, that, I could tell them uh, la, uh, la clase de inglés uh, en, es los lunes y los miércoles a las cuatro y media. You know, I am not <laughs> the most sophisticated Spanish speaker by any means, um, mm. but um, we could understand each other and we could get the job done. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And showing, I, like you said, I think showing that you are making the effort is a huge thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any, any, any group you're trying to reach out to that you're not part of. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. When I lived in Hong Kong, anybody that would smile at me and attempt to speak English won my heart. So <laughs> I smile and I attempt to speak Spanish and I hope it helps. <laughs> um, so through these conversations, um, I was asked to participate in a United Way project with our elementary schools. And that partnership has led to much higher attendance to in our kids events. Uh, do I have some pictures of that? Yep. <laughs> Yoga in the park. There we go. Um, I'm particularly proud of this um, book walk in the park with the T-Rex. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have this every um, Labor Day weekend. Last year, okay, yeah, last year we had 30 kids and 20 parents show up for this event. The year before, we had three. Wow. Oh, I ran out of prizes. Bring it was great. <laughs> yeah, that made me so happy. <laughs> and um, there has been uh, an uptick in the number of Spanish language materials being checked out. And now we host a Spanish literacy class in the library that's for Spanish speakers. It's taught in Spanish by Schuyler teachers that grew up here. Hmm. Yeah. And I finally did start <laughs> did your story time. <laughs> bilingual story time. So um, now here is where I tell you how it all falls apart. 
<laughs> oh, we do have a comment that I did want to uh, mention before you move on to that. Um, uh, one of your staff, Christine, is on uh, with us and says that you, Jenny, does very well speaking with the Spanish-speaking patrons. <laughs> ah, thank um, you. <laughs> oh, and no. she wants, and I don't know if you're going to mention something about an author event that you want to do. We just had an uh, an author event. Uh, in the library it was Tosca Lee. She's mm. from Fremont, and it was one of our, you know, better attended events in the library. And that got me thinking. I need to have a Spanish author, an author who has written something in Spanish, to do an author event in Spanish at the library. That would be awesome. So, yes. Yeah. So if you have any suggestions, uh, if you know anybody that. Um, has a book in Spanish, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> Especially, and I mean, sure, anyone you, you'd be willing to you know, bring in, but if they have that Nebraska connection like Tosca Lee does, that would be um, great too. So yeah, I'll have to see. Mm -hmm. if anybody knows anyone or has any, th any ideas on that, share. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Questions, I'll remind you, because we did have people come in since we started. Um, in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, anyone has any questions, comments, um, suggestions, uh, go ahead and type in there, and that's where I'm, I'm pulling these comments from for, for Jenny. <laughs> okay. Okay. When I say that it all fell apart, that might have been a little dramatic. <laughs> but I, I definitely felt like we lost momentum. Mm -hmm. Um, the the person that I had uh, connected with that was uh, embedded in the school from the United Way, um, she resigned. And so my direct line of communication uh, to that target audience was just snipped. And so now I'm like, oh, now I just have to start from the beginning again. And you know what? You, you just do it. You just have to start from the beginning again, reach out. Um, everybody knows somebody that you should talk to. So, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just go talk to them, you know, and it might lead to that, that partnership that that's beneficial to both of your or organizations. Um, I had, you know, this, you know, Spanish English uh, story time. Nobody came to it. <laughs> so, um, for a while, I was uh, reading the books uh, uh, on Facebook Live and putting them on our website. Sure. But it's just, it's not the same as, you know, having, you know, kids there to interact with. Um, so, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how can I, how can I take that and modify it and bring it to, um, you know, the target the target audience, the the Spanish speaking families, the the bilingual kids. So I think what I'm going to do is school is over now, but uh, in the fall we have a dual language program. Uh, it starts in kindergarten and I think it goes through third grade, but I'm going to reach out to them to see if the library can partner with them for story times at their school. Um, Warrior Academy is our after school program here in Schuyler. And the library learned really quick to partner with that and not compete against that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have pretty robust attendance. So we have, we have book club, uh, Warrior Academy book club in the library. Um, and I will, I'll introduce some bilingual and some Spanish language books with that. We'll see if there's any interest in that. Um, again, if anybody has any suggestions on, on how to, um, on interesting programs to try, please let me know. And I guess, um, to, to kind of wrap things up, I guess. Um, I guess you always want to when you when you watch a training or a informational video, you want to have one takeaway <laughs> to take home with you. 
And I was trying to think what would my one takeaway be? What would be the, the one thing I would want on a bumper sticker? <laughs> and um, and I, I guess to, I guess for me, it was, I learned that if there truly is a need here, you will start seeing results. Um, you just have to go out there, you have to hear what they need, and then try something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do the legwork to reach out. And that's a lot about a lot that libraries do in, in all areas is mm -hmm. yeah, reaching out, you know, looking at, and is that what you're talking about? What you did is, is exactly, what I'm always trying to tell libraries from here from the commission is look out into your community, find out what are your community's needs. Um, every library is unique. Every community is unique. Um, we all know the standard. Here's what libraries do. They do like they do story time. They do whatever they do. But what does your community want? Like all those questions that Jamie Lee Rue had. That is perfect. Those are the things you need to be asking. Don't ask what can what do you need from the library? What can the library do for you? Just say what do you think about our town? What do you think about what's going on in town? What is not happening that you would like it to happen? Um, that what are the good things going on that maybe the library could join with as well, like you just said, partnering with. Um, it, you know, don't take library out of the questions you ask and make yeah. them even themselves. You know, when the library, I think when the library and the library staff come and ask, so we have a survey, we want to know what you think, what you need, what's going on in the community. They keep thinking, oh, the library is asking me, they want to know what the library wants, but what I want the library to do. It's like, no, no, we just want to know anything you want to say about the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I and I say that like it's so easy. Yeah, just get out there. Just have some conversations, you know, try something new. Yeah, it's just as easy and just as difficult as that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. yeah. So, you know, like I said, you know, I had heard a lot about community and being valued you know, okay, <laughs> what can I do to make them feel valued here? And, you know, we'll, we'll try anything, you know, baby alligators, you got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Everyone likes baby animals. Yeah. Um, someone did have a suggestion for something to do. So um, a family game night, um, like okay. something that would be that that families could that could do together. Um, yeah, so has anybody else done any of this kind of programming at your library? I know some of you may be here looking to, you know, get ideas for doing this, but um, if you've done it, um, share um, any successes or failures you've had. We all learn from our um, failures as well. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we do have some que other questions that have come up that I do want to make sure we get asked too. So. Um, you said that you took um, the Spanish speaking, the Spanish class from the grant that you got from us. Have you, have any of your other staff taken any Spanish speaking classes or have you thought about having um, anyone else uh, do that who's on your staff or on your library board? I know you said you have some people who are bilingual. Um, yeah, um, none of my staff have really expressed any interest in that. Um, we we have um, we have money budgeted for continuing education. Um, yeah. If they're willing to give their time, let's make that happen. Um, well, seventy five percent of your population speaking Spanish. That seems like that should be something that should be highly encouraged. Yeah, <laughs> to be able yeah. to know how to communicate with the people in your community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know the because <laughs> I think um, the next time. Um, a job opening opens up in the library um, mm -hmm. that, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would, that would definitely be um, on the pro column <laughs> for absolutely. potential candidates. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so even though I, uh, I don't speak Spanish very well and I don't really have, um, much in-house staff, my library board has been very supportive and very helpful. Oh, um, I do, yeah, I do have uh, bilingual members on my library board um, mm -hmm. that help with day-to-day, -day, you know, um, 
translations and signage. They were very supportive of me uh, taking the Spanish class and participating in this leadership program. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And, and from what I understand, sometimes you don't, sometimes out in the real world, work, there can be some friction between the director and the library board. So I'm very lucky. It's great when you're when you're working together in harmony. That's how it should be. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm I'm very lucky in that regard. That's a uh, that's great to hear. Um, mm -hmm. All right, we do have some more questions and comments coming in. This is this is great. Um, let's see. Um, did you get much response from the community um, or the Spanish speaking community from the assessment um, or survey that you did? Um, was the, the, the was the, those responses come? From where did those responses come from, I guess? Those responses came from me going out and interviewing uh, community members and community leaders. I didn't have um, like a survey monkey or okay. um, anything like that. That was just me calling up, you know, the, um, <laughs> the, the guy who owns the lumber yard and asking, hey, you know, uh, can I have a, a bit of your time? Um, I'm, I'm working on this project because I want the library to be more valuable in our community, and I just wanted your thoughts about Skylar. Um, That's a great do. Yeah, doing those specific interviews with people, targeting someone, people you know, who um, would have a good feel for what's going on in the town or who are you know the uh the stakeholders in town get them involved with the library because they could also spread the word about what you're doing mm -hmm. after you talk yeah. To them. yeah and they were I, and that last question there who else should i talk with they always have somebody for you to talk to you know they're like oh well you might want to talk to um you know the chief of police you might want to talk to uh the guy that owns the the tire store or you might want to talk to this teacher at the pre-k building they all have excellent ideas on who you should reach out to next awesome do you have a chamber of commerce in skylar i don't know yes we do yeah mm -hmm. and that's, they... that's a good one too yeah um, that our chamber of commerce uh oh, come chamber of commerce just <laughs> co-hosted um the Cinco de Skyler festival here oh, nice. and okay. it was it was outstandingly well attended um <laughs> and it was just nice to yeah it was so much fun and there were so many people it was <laughs> it was really good to see awesome um, that'd be a perfect event to have like i don't know what was available there a table or something from the library or some sort of a library participation in that yeah I need to write that down too. Yeah, if they do another one. <laughs> do you know, so there's another question here. Do you know, you, and I don't know if you said this because I was, I may have missed it. You said that the most recent census says that you have 75% of the population speak Spanish. How, did you look at previous censuses or to see how much of an increase that was? Like what did it used to be in like the last one? I I did, but I don't remember it. Um, so this was something that, like the last time someone may have done this kind of research, that wasn't something that really jumped. This is like a more a recent. Um, well, it's it's more kind of this generation, that. because okay. my my husband is a Skylar guy, and mm -hmm. when he was in high school back in the eighties, um, mm -hmm. it was. It, it's very it was very much um czech heritage um oh. everybody you know everybody's great grandma uh it, it, it was the the skylar area was settled by czech immigrants hmm. so um that historically was the skylar demographic um then like i said we had um a meat packing plant open up in town uh, I think it was like 69, 70. Um, but yeah, and then um, they, they, they hired a lot of Spanish speaking employees. They, they, they settled in Schuyler. 
they made it their home. And now we have, you know, the next generation and the next generation. Hmm. In Skyler. Ah, all right. So it's been a while. Nice. Okay. Um, all right. I've got some more comments and questions here. This is good. Uh, so someone has us uh, with how they handle doing um, translations uh, for oh, yeah. like documents and flyers. So that we, this is this, they say uh, we're using the translate feature in Canva. Um, if Canva? You use Canva to do yeah. um, your documents or your your flyers mm -hmm. to do initial translation and then ask Spanish speaking staff to proof for crazy translations. <laughs> Canva can do not, so much, I guess. <laughs> and then just gonna, we want to double check. Yeah, I did not know Canva had that feature. So thanks for letting me know. Yeah, Canva is a great resource for making flyers and, and graphics and things. Um, even their free version is, is very robust. Okay. Um, I should I should touch upon. Okay. Here, okay, here I am. I'm this blonde gringa. I move into town and I'm like, let's, I did not want to be perceived as, let's have a fiesta. You know, the, I, I guess I did not, I did not want to fall into the white savior uh, or, you know, I didn't want to be, culturally obtuse and I and you mentioned just, earlier you wanted to be respectful yeah this was very much a concern for me because I did not want to inadvertently disrespect or insult mm -hmm. uh, anybody's culture anybody's language anybody's country of origin um, and so um, when I when I started this, um, I, I asked those Spanish speaking <laughs> library board members what they thought of my presentation and my project. I, I asked um, my regional uh, library system um, members if they would, you know, listen and give advice. And um, they, they gave me some really good feedback and um, they reassured me that since I went into it asking questions, asking you know what their concerns were, what they wanted to see in Skylar, um, that that was that was going to be more effective than just oh hey I'm doing this thing and it's in Spanish. You want to <laughs> do it right? You want to come to the library because it's in Spanish, right? <laughs> so um, so that I mean I still have that concern all the time. I, I spoke about the, the Paseo de Libros con um, T-Rex, the, mm -hmm. the book walk in the park mm -hmm. with the T-Rex. We, we had a bilingual book that we used for the book walk. And um, I was taking turns with the kids. You know, kids can read the Spanish section. I'll read the English section. We're, we're doing it together. And um, there was one little girl. I was like, okay, yeah, you can read this page. Go ahead. And she was like, I don't know Spanish. And I was like, that was just me assuming everybody <laughs> in Skylar was bilingual. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry about that. You want to read the, you want to read the English part? Then. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes, but um, people have been gracious and forgiving with me. That's awesome to hear, yeah. Um, so um, I had a question, but then someone else here mentioned it, so I'm gonna read theirs. Uh, this is uh, some. This is another library who's gonna be, who says they are just starting off with this kind of thing. And I believe if I'm not mistaken from their, um, from Virginia uh, said, we're just starting off. We will be having a resource day for Latino families this Friday wow, with the Office of New Americans and two different health organizations to provide info on food banks, immigration, um, ESL classes, et cetera. Um, it will also have face painting for the kids <laughs> plus a quiet corner with coloring, book, coloring and books. 
Um, we have Vox books, V-O-X, which are um, Spanish or bilingual stories that are that read aloud. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, we also have no Spanish speakers on staff, um, but I've worked to secure a few volunteers that speak Spanish and work with partners to run the event um, with only organizations that have a Spanish speaker on staff. Um, and that was something I was going to ask about when you were talking about we don't have any people on staff of um, these, you know, this is a lot of times the people in in any programming that you do, uh, your your major users, your big users, the library suddenly your your super users become volunteers because they are so um, appreciative of what the library does and so uh, supportive of it. So uh, that was something I was going to ask about is possibly some of these families that have been coming in, the Spanish speak families or Somali, uh, asking them if they wanted to volunteer at the library, and then you kind of they become part of the staff or <laughs> in some way. I'm taking notes on all of this. These are yeah. all great ideas. Yeah. So you said you don't have the you can't you don't have the ability to hire anyone new at the moment. Um, that seeing if anyone wants to do some volunteer work, you know, set up a program for for that. Um, I would recommend to uh, next year if you, if you you know apply for an internship grant from us and specify that you want to have an intern that is Spanish or Somali speaking. Um, and then this is something we have here at the Library Commission. For those of you from Nebraska, you know about it. If you don't, we do internship grants that we provide to public libraries and we give them the actual funds to pay the intern. So it's a paid internship. Um, so we can provide either 500 or $1,000, depending on how long you want the intern to work, um, to, so they get paid a salary. Um, to actually be an intern. So no in paid, unpaid internships, but um, that is something you can definitely do. Um, and I would give you the money for that. <laughs> yeah, and um, the participant from Virginia mentioned Vox Books. Yes. Um, we, we have something similar. They're called Wonder Books, but um, it's basically a bilingual kids picture book and there's a little device on the cover that will read it out loud. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so we, yeah, we used um, some of our ARPA grant money to get those. And I've seen, um, I've seen parents check them out to read with their grand, their, their kids and their grandkids. So, mm -hmm. um, it's it's serving their purpose and it makes me happy. Yeah, awesome. Um, that's also just another uh, suggestion just popped up here in the questions um, that the National Honor Society, key clubs, and other student groups like that are also resources um, that they work with theirs. And next year they're hoping to involve the Spanish speaking clubs. We have the Spanish Honor Society, Spanish student groups. Um, you know, get the teens okay. coming and helping out as well. Very good uh, recommendations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are all great ideas, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry, I didn't think of that myself. <laughs> right, anybody have any other questions? That is all the ones that had come in and that I had. Um, so I've caught up in everything that was um, entered. Uh, we still ha we have like about five more minutes left of our hour, our official hour. Does anybody have anything else they want to ask of Jenny? Anything you want to share that you're doing at your library? Type into the questions section. Um, well, I don't know if how many libraries are participating in the collaborative summer reading. Over summer reading program theme this yeah. year. Yeah, all together now is the theme yeah. about kindness and yeah. Todos juntos ahora. So um, yeah, I like that they are, that they provide multilingual resources. They've, yeah. they've done that for a while, which is great. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, oh, another tip just came in. Says, I haven't started it yet, but I hope to have a Spanish or ESL conversation practice club. For those who want to learn Spanish or those who want to learn English. So you may have, you know, like you said, the previous generations that are still speaking mostly Spanish, but need to, as you said, communicate with their kids or grandchildren more. Um, have a practice club where you can just come in and practice speaking to each other. That's a great idea. Thank you so much for these great ideas. 
Uh, okay, and another question here. Um, they want to know if you could, this is from some, uh, someone else has a question here. Uh, could you speak, uh, talk a little more about how you did that original connection identification? I guess finding out who to contact. We're in an area with a growing Spanish speaking population, but who really haven't had that first date, quote, mm -hmm. <laughs> with a library to know how to engage with it. And I'd love to know more about those initial steps. Okay. How did you well, figure out who to contact and who, yeah, who are the right people in town that would know this? Well, um, we started off just making a list. Um, and you're like, okay. Um, education the schools in town um who who would be a person that we should reach out to at the elementary school at the middle school at the high school um okay um law enforcement um do are there any spanish-speaking police officers do we need to talk to the chief of police what about um uh, we, we just kind of systematically uh, went through a list of all the, I guess, entities in town and kind of brainstormed who to talk to first there. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of more categories that we had besides education and law enforcement, um, civic groups. Um, we have Sertoma here in Schuyler. Um, maybe there's uh, Rotary Clubs or like Krista mentioned, the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, religious groups in town, different churches, uh, Spanish, Spanish language churches. Um, yeah, it, um, I mean, the, the process that was talked about at the, the workshop I went to, it was very specific and it was, um, um, it, it was, it was, it was a lot more than what I did. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was like, okay, you need to identify your shareholders. You need to do, and then I was just like, you know what, I, I can call the chief of police and, <laughs> and, and talk to him. I, I can call the pastor and, and talk to them. Um, I, I did a more, I did a, a simplified version of it. I, like I said, I mean, you, you, you out there, you might be a lot more uh, familiar with the community assessment process. Mm -hmm. It was a revelation to me, and I'm like, I'm going to call everybody in town. Um, <laughs> I'm still working on that. But um, yeah, to, to get back to the question, uh, identifying who to start with, um, yeah, it was just, it was as simple as that. We just kind of uh, sat down and, and thought about the, the different entities in town and who would we initially contact. And then when we had our conversation with them, they would recommend who to reach out to next, and we would go that way. Mm -hmm. And it would just go next person, next person. Yeah, awesome. Great, thank you. Um, and here's a suggestion too. Um, and a lot of times in schools now, um, people, us, uh, children or teens have to do community service hours as part of school, um, and adults may need to do them for various reasons. And so here's a suggestion about how about um, using Spanish speaking children in school or adults who need to do community service hours to serve as translator, translators or to help at programming. Um, volunteering at the library should definitely, I think, count as community service hours. I know that's something that in the schools a lot that's a requirement now for um, the kids they have to do a certain number of hours of community service. That'll be something to suggest or find out from your school how you get um, on their list, I guess, of yeah their, I, where they can go for community okay. service. Mm -hmm. I assume they have some sort of list to tell them where to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that I really do think that that is an untapped resource for Skylar because I I know that they have to be I know that they're out there. I just need to make myself and the library available to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are all good suggestions. Absolutely. Um, we have a question for you. Another question here that pops up. Awesome. Um, I am in a small library that is starting to see more Spanish speaking patrons. 
Our collection is small, limited to board books and picture books for the Spanish books. Uh, do you have a recommended publisher that has English, Spanish, youth, and adult books that you purchase from? I mean, you mentioned the other person mentioned Vox, you mentioned the Wonder Books for the ones that read, but um, where else um, specifically are you getting your Spanish language um, titles well, from, both for youth and adults? Um, we we order uh, the majority of our books from Baker and Taylor. Um, I also subscribe to a lot of newsletters. So um, I believe it's just called Spanish Publishers. Um, they um, are they exclusively publish Spanish and I think some bilingual, and they send out uh, newsletters with the cover and the English description and the Spanish uh, description so I can see if it would be interesting or useful to our patrons. Um, and then I try and order it from our standard distributor. I have to admit Baker and Taylor usually doesn't have a whole lot of stock of those books and sometimes we have to wait for them to um, back order it from the publisher. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I can do tax exempt purchasing directly from Spanish Spanish publishers, mm. the company. Um, um, yeah, and, I actually I just, and, I just I just Googled it and Spanish publishers and I put it in quotes. Yeah, it's uh, SpanishPublishers.net is the website and it is. Um, uh, wide, select, wide selection of Spanish titles in every category, translations of American bestsellers, as well as works of renowned Spanish authors. It says they are one of the top providers of Spanish titles in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yep. And sometimes I have to use big bad Amazon. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you got to go where you can find things somewhere sometimes. Um, and, 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 and here and, that Follett uses Spanish publishers too. So if you do Follett's as your, they, that's one of their vendors that they use. So yeah, SpanishPublishers.net. Um, and um, also um, Language Lizard. Um, those those weren't those were kids books and they're bilingual and um, I think we bought every single kids book that was Somali English from them but yeah Language Lizard has a really good selection they have a selection of uh, bilingual kids books. Yeah, there we go. Bilingual children's products and over 50 languages. Um, here, I am going to, because I've been looking these things up, I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen here, because I have been looking these things up so I can show you all what these uh, look like. There we go. Thank you for doing that, Krista. I, I, I didn't put together a, a slide. No, no, that's good. So yeah, there's, um, yeah, so languagelizard.com, bilingual children's products in over 50 languages. As I said, SpanishPublishers.net. Um, U.S. bestsellers in Spanish. Um, I looked up Vox books. Um, not sure if this is the right one for that or not. Um, but was the one you said Wonder Books? Wonder Books. Uh, Wonder Books Audio. I assume that would be. Oh, is that through Playaway? Yeah. It, yeah, oh, it is. There it is. Okay, it comes up as Playaway. Oh yeah, Playaway. Wonder. Okay. Oh, come on, it's being very slow. There it is. <laughs> Wonder book. Yeah. Great. So lots of great recommendations there. Um, any other uh, questions anybody has? We're a little past 11 o'clock, but that's okay. We stopped, started a little past 10 and um, we don't have to um, stop. Ah, okay. Uh, just because we be our time, we can go as long as it takes to answer all your questions and for uh, Jenny to share all she wants to. And yeah, the person here just shared the link to the Vox one, it's voxshop.libraryideas.com. There we go. That's the one, Vox Publishing. Mm -hmm. For those uh, 
<coughs> multilingual audiobooks. <coughs> And when I um, when we put to, when I put together the recording for today's uh, show, I will include links to all of these suggestions um, here that I've got up, so you'll have you all have access to them there as well in the record, in the archive page. If I can just make a book recommendation, I love the Pequeño Pez Blanco books. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the author's last name. <laughs> but um, the illustrations are super cute. The Spanish is right at my elementary level <laughs> of understanding. So um, it's it's a it's a cute little bilingual book about a little white fish, Pequeño Pez Blanco, and the adventures that he goes on. So if if you need a recommendation for a bilingual story. You can't go wrong with Pequeño Pez Blanco. Nice. Yeah. All right. So you got Vox, Wonder Book for Playaways, Language Lizard, and Spanish Publishers. All right. All right. Any other last minute desperate questions anyone wants to ask before we wrap things up for today? We do have some thank yous coming through. Um, Laura in Fremont says, Fabulous presentation. Thanks, Jenny. She had to go and take care of a building issue, as we all need to do something. Yeah. Well, well, thank you, Krista, and thank you to all the listeners. I appreciate you uh, giving me your time. Um, I am not an expert by any means, but um, if I can give it a try and if I can see results, you can too. So just, you know, <laughs> I just want to leave on a positive note. I know that it can be overwhelming and very frustrating but you know just just get out there and have some conversations and you will see results dive in and just try all you can do is try yeah awesome all right so thank you so much jenny i'm so glad we were able to have you on today um with us uh this was a session actually i didn't mention at the beginning that um was originally submitted she submitted this proposal for doing this session for our big talk from small libraries online conference um that i host here through the library commission it's at the end of february and it is co-sponsored by the association for Realm small libraries uh, <laughs> But we always get too many proposals than can fit on. It's only a one day event. I always have too many. So I'm very happy that I can get some of them to come on and encompass lives. So we get to hear about everything that everyone's doing. So thank you so much for being here today. Um, and thank you everybody for attending. Um, so I think we'll wrap things up. As I said, we are recording the show and it's gonna be available on our Encompass Live website. I'm gonna pop over there right now and show you how to get to that. Um, if you use your search, any whatever your search engine of choice is and type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, we are the only thing called that on the internet right now. Nobody else can use that name. <laughs> and you'll find our main page where we have our upcoming shows listed. Um, but at the bottom, there's a link to our archives. If you click on there, you've got, um, most recent one at the top of the page. Um, today's show will be here, uh, should be up and ready by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, as long as uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. There'll be a link to the uh, show our recording and to Jenny's slides. If you, if you wanna send me the link to that or send them to me when you get a chance, we'll add that. Um, I'll also add the link to all of these different uh, book suggest, um, purchasing suggestion places that we have here. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Uh, we also push that information out on our mailing lists. Uh, we also have a um, Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you'd like to use Facebook, you can give us a like over there and you get notifications. Here's a reminder about logging into today's show, meet the presenter, and then um, here's when I announced the recording of last week's show. So we'll always push that out. And also on Twitter and I think Instagram is what our uh, communications people also use. Um, using and we use the hashtag Encump Live, a little abbreviation of um, our show name. So you want to look for anything that we do out there on that. While we're here on the archive page, I'll also show you there is a search feature if you want to see if we've done a show and any particular topic you're interested in. You can search our full show archives, or you can limit it just the most recent 12 months if you just want something in the last year um and that is because this is our full show archives 
and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because if you can see over here, this is a giant list. <laughs> um, this is our full show archives going back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we are going on 15 years now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but um, so if you do watch an older show, just pay attention to the original broadcast date. It's on every show so you can know when we first did it. Um, many of the shows will be fine and stand the test of time and still be good, relevant, useful information. But some, some things will become old or outdated. Resources and services may have changed drastically. Some may have disappeared and no longer exist. Links may be broken because of that. Um, staff, people who did presentations for us may now work at a completely different library or not work in libraries at all anymore. You never know. So just pay attention if you do watch an older show to what the date was and keep that in mind. But um, this is something we do as librarians. We keep um, things for historical purposes for people to refer it back to. And as long as we have a place to keep these, we will always have them available. Uh, right now, it's all, as I said, all of them are on our Library Commission YouTube channel. All right, so that wraps it up for today. Um, here's our upcoming shows for the next couple of months. We've got all of June and July booked up so you can see all of our uh, shows we've got coming up next week. It is the last Wednesday of the month, and that means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, as you can see here, um, every last Wednesday of the month, there's a session called Pretty Sweet Tech. This is when our technology innovation librarian, Amanda Sweet, comes on the show and talk about something techie related. So if you are a tech person in your library, you're interested in technology, this is the ones to keep an eye on, the last Wednesday of every month. Um, Amanda will be talking to us. And next week, we have a guest presenter coming on with her. Uh, Dan Liu, who is from the Palo Alto City Library, is going to talk about their FarmBot program, um, raising vegetables and things using robots. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really cool. <laughs> uh, this is a session that Amanda uh, attended and saw at the Internet Librarian Conference last fall. And we now have Dan is coming on the show. She's coming on the show to share what they did there. So uh, please do sign up for that one. Hopefully see you next week or on any of our other upcoming shows. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jenny. And we hope to see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.